welcome. Today we will focus on our hips, our legs, and a little bit into the shoulders and upper back. Let's begin in a comfortable seat, maybe sitting on a blanket or another prop, so you can invite that nice tall spine. Any position, keeping your knees happy. And you might close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so, or just find a soft gaze. And just begin to tune in. Notice your body and any sensations you might be feeling in your body. Keep your spine nice and long and invite your shoulders to soften and sort of drip away from your ears. Begin to tune into your breath. Being aware of how your breath is moving and flowing through your body. And then gently open your eyes if they were closed. And on your next inhale, reach your arms out and up. And exhale, bring your hands down to your heart. Remember, this is your practice. Find variations as you need to. Always listen to your body and your breath. And then open the arms out wide. Lower your right hand down beside you. Reach up through your left arm. And then side bend over to your right. Choose your gaze. Maybe looking up, straight ahead, or looking down, whatever feels best. Notice your breath here. And then on your next inhale, come back up. Lower your left hand down, reach up through your right arm, and then side back over to your left. Breathe here. Maybe notice any differences between each side. And then inhale, coming back up, nice tall spine, and then lower the hands down. Come to table pose. Position your knees about hip distance apart hands about shoulder distance, and then inhale, arch the spine, draw your heart forward for cow, looking forward, exhale, draw the belly and look to your knees for cats. Notice how your spine feels. One more. And then come back to neutral and extend your right leg back behind you. Stay on the ball of the right foot and push that heel back. So you're getting into the hamstrings and calf and ankle of that right leg. Notice how that feels. And then lift the leg up just about hip height. Engage your core. Just an option if you want to extend that left arm forward or have the left hand on a block. Coming into your variation of pointer dog. And then lower that left hand, bend to the right knee, relax the right ankle, maybe point and flex through the foot a couple times. And then release that movement and move that right knee in a circle. Notice which way you're going, getting into that hip joint a little bit. And then reverse direction. 
and then lower that leg down. If you're in limited space, you might move over to the left side of your mat and extend your right leg out to the right of your mat. Right foot flat on the floor. Can't even see my foot there, but it's flat on the floor <laughs> in line with your left knee. And then from here, just a little movement forward and back. Notice how that feels in your inner thigh and hip. And then bring that right foot in just a little bit closer, maybe just an inch or so, and move your left hand forward on your mat and inhale your right arm up for a twist to the right. Notice how this feels, finding that expansion across the upper chest. And then lower that right hand down. Move that right foot out again an inch or two. Your right wrist is in front of your right shoulder. Inhale your left arm out for a twist to the left. You may not go as far this way, that's okay. And then lower that left hand down. Bring your wrists again just about under your shoulders. Thoughtfully take that right foot back behind you and over to the left edge of your mat, maybe onto the floor and turn and look over your left shoulder towards that right foot. And then inhale, coming back to center and re-bend that knee underneath you. Before we go to the other side, we're going to come into a variation of child's pose with the shoulder stretch option of hands on blocks. If hands on the blocks is too much for your shoulders, don't use the blocks. Widen your knees, sit your hips back towards your heels, or you could choose to widen the feet a little bit, coming into a wide leg child's pose. Reach one hand onto one block and then the other hand onto the other. And keep your head up slightly. Or if you feel you can lower the head, you may not be able to make it to the mat, but you might put another prop like a blanket or a towel under your head. So if this is too much, we're just trying to get sort of some feedback of what's going on in the shoulders. If it's too much, bend the arms or don't use the blocks. Take a couple more breaths here. and then thoughtfully make your way up out of that position. Bring your knees back underneath you. Set your blocks aside if you were using them and extend your left leg back. Press through that left heel, getting a stretch in that left hamstring calf and ankle. And then lift that leg up about hip height. Engage your core. You can either stay here or reach the right hand forward on fingertips or a block or lift it up parallel to the floor for a pointer dog, whichever variation you would like. The arms lifted, go ahead and lower that hand back down. Bend your left knee, hovering it over the mat. Point and flex through that left ankle, if you would like. And then relax that ankle, knee circles. Notice which direction you're going. And just notice how that hip joint feels. And then reverse direction. And then lower that knee down for a moment. Maybe scoot over to the right edge of your mat. Make sure you have room on the left edge of your mat and extend your left foot out in line with your right knee, left foot flat on the floor. A little bit of movement forward and back.
and then come back to neutral. Move your right hand forward on your mat and inhale. Lift your left arm up for a twist to your left. Exhale, lower that left hand down. And again, that foot might have come closer, so you might want to move it out a little bit. And inhale, twist to your right. You might notice how one side might be easier to twist than the other. And then thoughtfully lower the right hand down. And then slowly and thoughtfully take that left leg back behind you and all the way over to the right edge of your mat or onto the floor, staying on the ball of that foot and look over your right shoulder towards that back foot. Inhale, coming back to center and rebend that knee underneath you. Widen your knees again. Bring those blocks onto the low setting. So you have the option again to widen your feet, wide leg child's pose. Notice how that feels in your hips. And then bring the blocks a little closer so that you can position your elbows on them. Positioning the blocks about shoulder distance apart. And then forehead to the mat. Or if the forehead doesn't quite make it to the mat, you might place a blanket there to rest your forehead. And notice how this feels. This is a stretch into the hips as well as the upper back and shoulders. And if it's too much with the blocks, just bring your elbows onto your mat without any blocks underneath them. Slowly on your next inhale, start to come back up. Slowly straightening your arms, lift those hips up. Come on to one hand and then the other. And then set those blocks aside and make your way all the way onto your belly for Sphinx Pose. Positioning your forearms parallel and your elbows just about under your shoulders. Actively press into your hands and forearms as if you're trying to pull yourself forward on your mat, drawing your lower ribs away from the mat and lengthening through your spine. Press into the tops of your feet. Gaze just down towards the top of your mat or in between your thumbs and feel that activation in the upper back and shoulder girdle. As if you're energetically drawing your heart forward. Couple more breaths here. And then thoughtfully release down part way, hands under your shoulders, elbows go towards the back of your mat. And take an inhale and come up into your cobra. And exhale, slowly lower down. Inhale, press up into cobra. Maybe a brief pause at the top of your inhale. And as you exhale, slowly lower down. Elbows out, stack your hands, and come into Makrasana. Rest your forehead on the back of your hands. Release all effort. Relax and notice your breath. And then inhale, lift your head. Bring one hand, then the other under your shoulders. Press yourself up into table. Pause here, lengthen through your spine. Notice how that feels. 
Then tuck your toes, reach your hips up and back and come into your downward dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Any movement here as well that feels good to you, maybe pedaling your feet, walking your dog. You can shift your hips a little left to right, getting a stretch through the side body. And just notice how this feels. Press down into your hands, rounding towards the earth. Root down into your feet as you take your heels towards the earth. Lengthen through your spine as you reach your hips up and back. Notice how this feels. One more breath here. And then slowly walk your feet towards your hands. Come up halfway, maybe using blocks under your hands or hands on your shins below the knees. Pause here and really lengthen through your spine. Activate the legs, keep your spine long, and then start to hinge from your hip crease, coming into forward fold, Uttanasana. Feel free to micro bend the knees or a little more bend as you need to. Say hello to those hamstrings. If you can bend the knees a little more and bring your belly to your thighs, you have some support there. You might bring your hands to the opposite elbow and just let the upper back and shoulders release a little bit. Make sure that the belly is resting on your thighs so that the low back is protected. And if your hands are to opposite elbows, release one, then the other. Hands to blocks or the mat or floor. And then come up slowly, halfway. Hands again where they make sense to you. Pause here. And then exhale, hands to your hips or thighs. Bend your knees, look forward and pass through easy chair. Looking forward, hands might come to your heart or you can keep them on your thighs or you could reach them forward. Coming into your variation of chair. Weight in your heels. And then inhale, slowly come all the way up. Hands to your heart. You might lift your toes, spread your toes, and lower them back down. Round into your feet. You might imagine energetic roots, like tree roots, going deep into the earth. Notice the activation in your feet and legs. And keep your spine nice and long. Gentle lift of your heart. Rooting down and rising up. Tadasana, mountain pose. Tadasana is also wonderful to do outside. You can get somewhere in bare feet to really connect with the earth. And then relax, shake the arms out a little bit wide stance and then turn your heels in toes out bend your knees making sure your knees are tracking in the same direction as your toes hands to your heart for goddess pose notice how this feels make sure knees are okay here and then a little bit of movement inhale reach the arms out and up come up off that knee bend and then exhale, rebend your knees, come back to goddess. Again, inhale, reach out and up, rising up. Exhale, hands to your heart, come back into goddess. 
And again, inhale, reaching out and up. Exhale, hands come back into goddess. And then open the arms into fierce goddess, goalpost arms. Feeling your inner strength, your own fierce goddess. Feeling the heat build up in your hips and legs. A couple more breaths. And then inhale, straighten your legs, straighten your arms, five-pointed star. Reaching up energetically as you continue to root down through your feet. Breathe here. And then relax the arms down. Parallel your feet, heel, toe, heel, toe. And step your feet back into Tadasana and pause. Notice sensation. Notice those hips, any energy or sensation in the hips or legs or anywhere else. And then take another wide stance. And this time turning your right foot towards the short end of your mat and bend your right knee, preparing for warrior two. Take your back heel slightly back, bringing your shoulders just about over your hips and the hips at a slight angle, making sure that front knee is just about over that ankle and arms come up about shoulder height. Gaze over the front fingertips and you can decide how deep you want to go. You want more, you can inch that front foot forward and bend the knee more. You want less, heel toe the back foot in a little closer. Breathe here, focusing on grounding through your feet and notice the activation of your legs. embodying your own inner warrior. And then inhale, come all the way up, straighten that front leg, turn the right toes in, turn your left toes towards the short end of your mat and bend that left knee. Adjust your back foot where it feels stable to you. Notice your hips and position of your front knee. Arms up about shoulder height or what makes sense to you. Virabhadrasana two, notice your breath. Embodying your inner warrior. Feeling that connection with the earth through your feet. Thoughtfully straighten that front leg, turn your left toes in, lower your arms. Heel, toe, heel, toe. Step back into mountain pose, Tadasana, and pause. Notice sensation. And then preparing for Prasarita Padatanasana, wide leg forward fold. Bring your blocks. Taking another wide stance, set your blocks down in front of you. Hinging from your hip crease, bring your hands onto your blocks or your mat. Pause at the halfway point. Keep your legs active, feet are parallel. Spine is long. And then hinging from your hip crease to come a little deeper. Listen to your body. And if it makes sense to maybe use a block under your head, you might position that. Just make sure the neck is long and there's no strain there to get the head to the block. And also use two blocks positioned at whatever arrangement makes sense to you. Find what works and you can bring your feet in a little bit closer or a little wider to make it just a little more comfortable in the neck. You might find you can go a little deeper onto the, the block setting if your feet are a little wider. But listen to your legs and hips. Keep your legs strong, spine long, and continue to breathe easily here. Keeping your eyes open, but the gaze soft. 
legs are strong and active. Few more breaths here. And then inhale, coming back. Up. Bring your hands under your shoulders, maybe onto blocks. So heel toe, your feet in a little closer and come down onto one knee and then the other. Bring your legs out in front of you just for a relaxed Dandasana and notice how you feel. So come on to your back first and bend your right knee in towards your chest and straighten your left leg out on your mat. Take your left hand on your right knee, roll over towards your left hip. The right foot might just come on to your leg or the mat or a prop, gazing to your right. Alligator twist. And then thoughtfully bring your head back to neutral. Come back onto your back. Bend both knees, arms by your side. Lift your hips and realign your spine. Make sure you feel even. And then draw your left knee in. Straighten your right leg out. Take your right hand on top of that left knee. Roll over to your right hip. And whatever prop you need under that left leg, or you can just hold your right hand on that knee. Maybe the left foot is just on your thigh or the toes are on the mat. And gaze over to your left. Maybe the left arm comes out a little wider for your alligator twist on this side. Notice your breath. On your next inhale, bring your head to neutral. Bring yourself back onto your back. Bend both knees, arms come in close, feet on the mat. Lift your hips, realign your spine, tailbone towards your feet. Lower the hips down. And then bring your hands onto your knees. Draw each knee towards each armpit. Toes might be close together. Bring your knees in. Give yourself a little bit of a hug. Maybe rocking side to side or moving your knees in a circle to massage the low back. And go both directions if you're doing that variation. And then make your way into your Shavasana. So make sure you feel warm enough, comfortable enough. And as you settle in for your final resting pose here for today's practice, notice how your body feels. Notice the support beneath you and release and relax into that support and invite your body to soften and release a little bit more into that support with each exhale. Invite your legs to be heavy and soft. Allow your hips to release and relax and let go. Envision space between each vertebrae. Soften your shoulders and arms. Soften your lower belly. Soften the area around your heart. Soften all the muscles in your face, especially around your eyes. And let go.
gently bring your awareness back to being on your mat. Notice your body and how it's supported by the earth beneath you. Notice your breath and how it's flowing through your body. And observe your mind. Whenever you feel ready, begin to make small movements, wiggle fingers, toes, maybe rotate your wrists or ankles. And then bend one knee and then the other and make a thoughtful transition over onto one side, maybe supporting your head with your bottom arm. And then make your way back up to a comfortable seat. And with appreciation for your efforts and your focus, bring your hands together at your heart in Anjali Mudra. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Namaste. Thank you.